This month, I got the chance to speak with actor RJ Mitty. The Breaking Bad star sat down with CPSN to talk about his latest film, Triumph, which follows a teenager with cerebral palsy fighting to join his high school wrestling team. The film is based on the life of screenwriter Mike Coffey, who also sat down with me to talk about the process of making the movie. So I just wanted to thank both of you for joining me today and agreeing to speak with me. I saw the movie and really enjoyed it. And I know that you first released the movie earlier this year. What's been some of the feedback you've had so far? Positive. Um, every, everyone that we've we've seen uh that's seen this movie has always had positive and always taken something away from it and, and everyone that's encountered this film has taken a different message from this story and, and for me that's very important um because this has so many messages and you know this is based on michael's life and it was a great honor to be able to to bring this to life and, and try to do michael and as mm-hmm. much he's happy with it I'm happy with it yeah, oh yeah and um, everyone that's loves it so Mike you've always said it was important to cast someone with CP and I think you originally had RJ in the in mind when you were writing yeah. the script did yeah. you have resistance when you were planning to cast an actor who actually had cerebral palsy no in fact RJ is the first Actually, I cast so I had all the boy from the get go. So everyone knew that he was a boy. So that really helped get the movie going from that point forward. I, I think that's really good. And I think having someone who actually has CP in the role is really important too. RJ, you've been working in Hollywood since you were a teenager. Have you seen a shift in how Hollywood casts people with disabilities? Uh, is it more accessible now than it was when you started? Yeah, I, I've seen a massive shift um, in the community, mainstream media on how people are perceived with disabilities and, and really more or less how people accepted with disabilities and, and how uh, important it is to put diversity on the forefront of projects you know that's really grown when it used to be a thing that was kind of overlooked and um, and now it's something that is like it's almost mandatory to have diverse projects now it's almost like a, you you can't get a project made unless it has diversity based behind it and I, I think it's amazing to see the impact over the last couple of decades in the film industry on where we were to what we are doing today with mainstream media and new media. And uh, I've seen a massive growth, um, both in negative ways, but I think for the most, it's definitely been um, more positive and more impactful because people are being, stories are being told, stories like Triumph are being shared and it's changing the perspective of reality on how people view each other. And that's what the whole point of a movie and film and television and, and media is about, is changing perspective and changing the narrative um, to reflect what we are and who we are as individuals. You know, I was thinking about what you said there and you talked about how it's almost become mandatory. I, one of the things I've heard people say, and I, I hear able-bodied people say this a bit, where it's like they start to complain about political correctness in Hollywood with the casting of people with disabilities, casting of that nature. What would you say to that? I mean, I think there's two sides to that coin. I think there is a, um, I think there is such an important aspect to show reality um, and representation in our mass media um, to, to be able to show people, to, to everyone feel that they can see and relate to the individual. I, I think from, I think what a lot of people don't like is the targeting and the, and the dramatization of stuff that is kind of overplayed and underrealized. And I think there's that double-edged sword to, we want to, we want all of it, but we don't want too much. We want too much, but not all of it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I think there's a fine line that we have to walk when it comes to diversification in media. Um, at the same time, I think it is a pivotal and important piece to show in mainstream media that really does get overlooked. Um, 
that I think what a lot of times we have to worry about is that targeting um targeting audience and and where we can we don't really want to support people but we really want to just use them and yeah. i think that's what we have to figure out how do we find that happy balance of where people aren't just being being utilized because it is that important piece right there's so many times where it's like oh we have to have these types of people but are they the best not always but is it important to show route these types of individuals yes so it's important to have real casting and real real artists that, that bring that to the team and bring that information and make it where it's legible for individuals to actually understand what these types of messages are mike a lot of the film is based on your real life uh have the people who inspired the other characters seen the movie and what has their impression been so far um. No, the lady, no, the story I used my high school senior English teacher is based on the teacher in my movie. And I don't know if you've seen it yet, but hopefully you should have seen it when it comes out on video. I hope it comes out on video soon. So I'm going to try to test me for some aspect and see what I've seen the same thing a little bit. So, yeah, my eyes can't be my, my pieces for the movie because they help inspire me to keep writing. So I'm going to pay tribute to them for showing them what they did to help me. I thought that was so cool. I, I think that's great. I, RJ, I just wanted to touch on something, because I, I, I think I heard you say in an interview once, the last thing you wanted was to be cast as someone drooling in a chair. As an actor in Hollywood with a disability, have you had to turn down roles because you didn't like the way they were representing disability? Oh, all, all the time. More... more um more or less a, a, a long time ago, like five, 10 years ago, I would get a lot of roles and I just didn't feel um, that that were real, that were, that were really relative to what my skills are as an actor, what I'm capable of, to what they really wanted me to do. And sadly, looking back, I, I should have took the job. Um, but, um, <laughs> I wasn't I, expecting you to say that. <laughs> I mean, hey, I, I probably would have made a lot more money and, and have more roles if I would have taken the, the jobs that I, I not morally sound on. Um, but, but at the same time, I'm very happy I didn't. Um, but, but it happens, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things that people want you to do in this industry that you may not necessarily agree with. Um, and it's up to you as the artist and you as the individual that has to portray those roles to to say yes or no. And and yes, I, I've said no many times um, against other people's opinions um, financially and otherwise. Um, but for me, I, I don't take roles that I don't feel passionate about. I don't take roles that don't ring true to who I am as an individual or to what the messages that I want to bring to the, to the general public. And, um, and for me, that's something that I, I try to hold myself in a high regard to what I agree to and what I sign up for, um, because that's all we have. Mm. And, uh, and at the end of the day, you know, sometimes it's like, man, I really should have took that job. But then it's like, <laughs> Yeah. Dude, I really want to kind of lose my my way of or or my portrayal of who I am or who I want the general public to see me as. Mm. I mean, that's I guess an interesting part of this project is you're taking on a script that was written by someone who has the same disability as you. Do you think that makes a difference when the story is kind of controlled by someone with that experience? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a big part of it. I think um the heart behind stories and meaning behind stories and and what they ring true to the artist to the crew and to the audience um are, are so 
important uh, when you're creating a project like this. You know, these, these types of projects, especially having like Michael with his story and, and pulling this project together and, and, and starting from scratch and making a dream come true. That's what this, that's what the film industry is about. It's, it's making dreams reality. It's bringing, bringing vision to the forefront and, and sharing it with the world. And, and for me, that is so um, special and unique. And we don't really see it as much in the media and as much on the mainstream um, television and movies as we used to. Uh, and, and I feel that when you have a story like Triumph and, and there's, there's been a few others I've done, but spe specifically Triumph that has a writer like Michael that has the backstory and, and the, the history that Michael has with this story and different, the different ups and downs that this character goes through and the experiences and the knowledge that these characters gain um, is important to share with with the world mm -hmm. and you know always going to be a movie for everyone but for the most part everyone can take something away from it and to learn something of themselves not just from a disability standpoint but just a human standpoint mm -hmm. mike uh, I'm yeah. so, the movie is set in the 80s and it's uh, obviously again as mentioned against your upbringing how do you think opportunities for people with disabilities have changed since that time for you what have you observed yeah, i think we're, we're making progress with inclusiveness so i think people are more aware of people with disabilities and there's more understanding more education, so I think everyone helps people with like me communicate with others. And before people were kind of hesitant to come up and talk, talk with me, but more and more these days, people come up to me in that you see more. Um, understanding the open to being friends of art. So it's definitely, definitely moving forward to more of acceptance. I think that's really important. I think it's hard often for people with disabilities to feel uh, included. I think it's it can be like an isolating experience. Um, I actually want to deviate and go off in a different direction because I was reading articles in preparation for this. Am I correct in understanding there was almost, a, I, I don't know, a con man involved during the production of this movie? Yeah, um, yeah. Um, my first, the first guy that I work with turned out to be a scammer. So we found out why you like today, had to stop the movie after 18 days of shooting to go to the lawsuit. So that's why it took so long to get this movie to this. There's never many obstacles, and there's still are obstacles, but I think we're going to make it because we never gave up. Yeah, I think I read that the production started in 2014, but it didn't really finish until 2019. So I think right. a whole bunch of the actors have gone through puberty, essentially. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, no, it's, definitely, it's definitely been a labor of love. You know, this, this film really is a testament um, to its name, Triumph, when it comes to the hurdles that we've had to jump in and pull together funding and people to rally behind this film and really make it work. And you know, it's funny that, you know, when you have something very special and you have something unique and, and something that people clearly want, um, sadly, people will try to take it from you. Um, and especially when you have a disability, people think they can steal from you even more. And, uh, and it's sad to see that happen, but it's actually a very common thing um, when it comes um, to projects like this where people will try to take it from you and, and dilute your vision and remove you from the projects and luckily with Michael and myself and many others we were able to rally behind the film and, and save it in a sense and 
it's been a very triumphant film. Um, <laughs> what we what we've been trying to do and, and where we've gone to the players involved, and we're very lucky to um, to many people. Um, one being Michael, um, another Michael, Michael <laughs> Clofine, who bring this film and and um, spearhead this so many so many directions. And we're very grateful for our team that we have now that that just really rallied behind this. You know, there has been many many obstacles in our way, but we've been we've been persevering through them all um, because we believe in this message. We believe in this story, and we want this story to get out to as many people as possible because. We believe that people can learn from it, people can enjoy it, and and get a sense of of information and, and wonder that that is not like any other film. Well, we're thrilled to help you promote the movie, and, and we hope it gets out to as many audience members as possible. I, in my understanding correctly, you guys are working on another project in the future. Tell me more about that. I <laughs> Yeah, I'm hoping, hoping you make another one called Somebody Like You, but I'm kind of waiting on that and get five done first. But yeah. Yeah, we're, we're working on really triumph, um, being able to get this movie out there and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll move on to the next one. But really, we want to get this film out and, and get it behind us. You know, it's been since, it's, I guess, almost seven years now, you know, and it's been a labor of love, and we really just want to be able to have people enjoy this film before we start the next one. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's really great that you're con both continuing to work. I can see you have a lot of other projects coming up. I can see that, Michael, you're going to be working with Josh Blue soon. Is that correct? Oh, you oh yeah. Oh, yeah, he's... I've been in contact with him around two thousand. I wrote the script with him in mind, so I'm hoping to get that going next year. So yeah, it's coming. We'll make the comedy. So I'm working on that right now while times is being dangerous. So kind of multitasking. Awesome. And RJ, I think you have one or two projects coming up if you wanted to mention those at all. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm um I'm in development. But, but uh, we'll see how they're coming along. We're in the middle of filming a couple of projects right now. But um but again just really really trying to get Triumph out there and, and get this movie going. Awesome. I, I really appreciate both of you taking the time to speak with me this morning. I think it's the afternoon where you guys are but I really appreciate it again um and uh, thank you so much well, thank you, thank you.